There's no doubt that one of the things that intrigues us most about the white-tailed deer is the antlers that are attached to the buck's heads. Of course, there's the old adage that you can't eat the horns, but I've never met a hunter who has harvested a large antlered buck that hasn't made an issue about the size of those antlers. But no matter your view on antlers, it is really interesting to look at how they grow. I had the opportunity to learn something about antler growth in two specific bucks on public land in a swamp setting. I set up a trail camera a couple of years ago and it was on a point, a wooded point, that goes down into a swampy area. And in these images you'll be able to see, at least in some of them, a light background and that's the swamp area, that's where the cattails are. And this area had almost exclusively buck traffic in it. Occasionally a doe or a fawn would wander through, but there were actually more images of black bears than does and fawns. In this video on antler growth, I want to focus on three things that I think that we can learn from this experience. The first is about the timing of antler growth. The second is about being able to distinguish different bucks from one another. And the third is some insight into what bucks do after they shed their velvet. Let's take a look at the images. Let me just say from the outset two things. First, I don't have a tendency to call bucks that I identify by names, but for the purposes of clarity in this video, I'm going to call this first buck the trash buck, and the second buck I'm going to call the perfect eight. The reason I'm going to do this is so that I don't use numbers like the first buck and the second buck and confuse people. The second thing is that my only regret about this video is that I only have still images from my trail camera. At the time, I didn't even know that my trail camera could take video footage. Currently I run all of my cameras on video mode because I feel like I can pick up more information about the deer that are showing up in front of that trail camera. Even the way that a certain deer walks or a limp that they may have or a nuanced direction in which they're coming from can be really helpful. But this is the trash buck and if you look closely on his left brow tine you can see a protruding bump near the base and then at the very top of that left brow tine it's much, much wider than the other brow tine, the right brow tine. And you'll see eventually that both of these end up growing. Basically, he's got a three-pointed brow tine when everything is said and done. This is the first discernible image that I have of this buck where I can truly identify that this is him. And it's on June 4th. So this is just another angle of the same buck, the trash buck. A couple of days later and you can see pretty distinctly the difference between his two brow tines. You can already tell that he has a lot of mass and his body is big. He's a mature buck. This image is from July 17th so just a little bit over a month later than the previous picture. And throughout the images that I got of these two bucks they showed up on average about every third day. But a lot of the pictures, because of the sunlight or just they were moving too fast and so they're really blurry, didn't turn out well. So this is the first good picture that I have of him after that initial growth in June. And you can see his antlers have absolutely blown up. In just about 30, 35 days, he's put on almost all of his growth for the year. And if you look closely, you can actually see that that left brow tine has three protrusions from it. In fact, the one brow tine, the left brow tine, actually hooks over toward the right one. And he has incredible mass in his antlers. This next image is from August 29th. So he's still in velvet, but he's pretty much done growing. In fact, he has been done growing for a number of weeks in large part. But you can see the body size of this deer. I estimate that he's at least five and a half years old, maybe older. You can see the pot belly on him from this angle. And he hasn't even blown up yet because of the huge increase in testosterone 
because of the impending rut. And so he has the potential to get much, much bigger in body size. Also, this gives you a pretty good angle at that left antler and the, especially the left brow tine. You can see all the protrusions coming out of it. So we fast forward to September 19th. And at this point, this is the first semi good quality image that I have of the trash buck after he's shed his velvet and he is a monster. So just a little bit later on the same day here toward the end of September, and this is the last image that I have of this buck, but, but you can see there are just antlers going everywhere. Everything about this buck is big. His body is big. His belly is big. His antlers are really large. He's a tremendous buck. Unfortunately, I never got the chance to pursue him because I didn't pull the trail camera card until December of that year. And last year, because of a variety of reasons, I wasn't able to return to this location. But I'm going to be certainly looking in this spot this year, and I have a pretty good feeling of where the deer, the bucks, are dispersing to after they shed their velvet. So let me introduce you to the what I call the perfect eight buck. As you'll find out, he has almost a perfectly symmetrical mainframe eight for a rack. And this is the first image that I have of him where I know it's definitely him. This first image is from June 11th, exactly one week after I got the first image of the trash buck. And he is considerably behind the trash buck in his antler development at this point. They'll ultimately end up with about the same size racks, at least width-wise and pretty close to the same height. But obviously the trash buck will have way more mass than this perfect eight. This is a little over one week later on June 20th, and there's not a huge change in this buck's rack. He has gotten a bit wider, but most of his explosive growth will happen here in the next couple of weeks. Just two days later, I get this image during daylight of the perfect eight. And one of the things that is really defining about this buck, although it's pretty subtle, is his left brow tine hooks just slightly at the top of it inward. So sadly, I get some images between the last image and this one, which is August 11th. But unfortunately, so many of them are distorted or he's running. It's really hard to discern that it's him. And so this is kind of the iconic image of the perfect eight while he's in velvet. You can see that little hook at the top, not much, but very slight on his left brow tine. And you can see that he's put on quite a bit of growth uh, since the last time we've seen him. And... He now has a rack that's pretty similar to the trash buck. In fact, I hate to admit this, but for the longest time, I actually thought these two bucks were the same buck. And it was only after I blew some of the images up and looked at them and studied them really closely that I discerned, you no, know, they're actually two different bucks of the same size using this area. Of course, one of the big giveaways was not just the rack, but also the body size. This buck is, I believe, a three and a half year old, but uh, as I said before, the trash buck I think is probably five and a half at this point, or maybe even older. About a month later on September 18th, here is the perfect eight, and now he has shed his velvet. And unfortunately, the picture is not very good because a good bit of his antlers are actually off the screen, but you can definitely see that this deer is no slouch. He is a big body deer. He's got good mass to his antlers. He's just not quite the same caliber as the trash buck. Two days later on September 20th, here's the perfect date again striding through this little opening. And he seems like he's got a purpose to his step although that could just be my imagination. 
but he's a really nice buck as you can tell. Then on September 23rd, I get the last image of this perfect eight buck in this trail camera spot. You can see he's a wonderful, massive animal and certainly one that would be on my short list of deer that I would want to harvest. Like the trash buck though, almost at the exact same time of the year, he disappears and I don't have any more images of him. If possible, I always like to learn something from these kinds of studies, if you will. And the first one is about antler growth and the rate in which antlers grow. And I think there are two big takeaways here. The first one is that different bucks will start growing their antlers at different times. And so in this case, the trash buck actually has a jump start. And of course, he ends up with a bigger rack, but not much bigger. Um, there's a lot of extra trash, especially on that left brow tine, and he has more mass to his antlers overall, but he gets out of the gate much quicker than the perfect eight does. But ultimately, they end up kind of catching up to one another. They have pretty similar size racks in the end. Though the images are really distorted, and so I'm not going to include them in this video, the trash buck essentially finishes up most of the growth in his antlers for the year by the beginning of August, while it's almost three weeks later for the perfect eight buck. And so those three weeks make a big difference. And so I guess part of the takeaway here is if you see your buck and it seems to be lagging behind some of the other bucks that you're seeing around, don't give up hope because maybe the antlers started growing later in the season and eventually they'll catch up. You know, as antlers continue to grow outward, you know you're going to add more width until they start that hook back in. So until you notice that the antlers are starting their U-shaped hook back toward the center of the deer's body in front of him, he's still putting on considerable growth. The other big takeaway I think for me is that it's amazing to me that antlers, one of the fastest growing tissues on the face of the earth, probably about 80% of a buck's antler growth in one year takes place in about two months time. So in 60 days, they're putting on a huge amount of growth. And so if they have really good nutrition, that really helps to aid in the growing of really good antlers. One of the ways that I've gone about that is to mineralize my food plots. And that means going beyond NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and making sure I have all the micronutrients there as well. So the second big lesson is in being able to identify bucks using trail cameras. And so their antler growth is a huge part in being able to discern one buck from another. But as I said earlier, I actually thought that these two bucks were the same buck for the longest time. And ultimately what ended up tipping the scales and figuring out that there actually were two different bucks was paying close attention to nuances in the antlers. And specifically here, it was that left brow tine on the trash buck that gave things away. And then I was able to work backwards in some cases or in forward in some cases to figure out which pictures were which buck. And this isn't just a matter of categorizing things. You can figure out a lot of times the favored direction that that buck maybe is coming from or going to. And those can really lead to critical understandings in where you're going to set up your hunting stand. Of course, I would always recommend running your trail camera in video mode if possible. With today's technology and increasing sizes of SD cards and the capacity of batteries, you can usually go three months, maybe six months without having to go into your trail camera. And when you do, just choose a day that's kind of rainy or it's going to rain right after it, that tends to wash your scent away and so you have less intrusion into that area. 
And this can give you additional clues to figure out which buck is which. Maybe a buck has a gimpy leg or a certain spot on the side of its uh, hide. And those are usually easier to discern when you're using video mode. The third lesson was a pretty profound one for me. We all know that bucks, generally speaking, seem to move after they shed their velvet. What I was surprised about is that I had probably 13 or 14 bucks regularly on this trail camera. And from the end of September, in the case of these two bucks, you know, the trash buck left, the last picture I had of him was September 19th, the last one of the perfect date was September 23rd, but no bucks after September showed up on this camera. So it went from almost exclusively buck pictures and lots of them to nothing from October, November, and December. And then it seemed like the role switched where I started seeing does and fawns and before they weren't really in that area. So of course the trick is finding where those bucks go then. And that is part of the joy of hunting. One of the interesting things that never even crossed my mind until I started doing some research for this video is I found this antler shed right here. You can see it's a pretty good one. I found it the spring of 2019. So it would have been right before I hung this camera, the images that you just watched. And it's interesting because it has a really unique looking brow tine. The one side of it is almost completely flat, like it's a squared off shape actually. And it's very long. In fact, it's the longest tine on this rack. And it also has this little kicker here at the base. And I started looking at the images of the deer that I called the trash buck in these pictures and realized this is the left antler of a buck and the funky looking one on the trash buck actually was the left antler. And then I got looking closer and there's a lot of similarities between the two. And I wonder if this is the shed from the year prior of that trash buck. This shed antler was found no more than 40 yards from where I ultimately ended up hanging the trail camera. It was in the cattails where there was a fallen log that had come off of that wooded point. I don't have any way to definitively prove that this is his antler, but it sure looks a lot like it. I definitely feel like there's the same gene pool in play here, if nothing else. I'm quite confident in the pictures that the trash buck is a very mature animal, at least five and a half years of age or older. And they have this tendency as they get older to have more growth on their antlers, not just in size, but a lot of kicker points or um, atypical type stuff that starts happening. And I wonder when you see that brow tine that goes up and then it actually points to the front and then there's actually another kicker that comes off of it. It's the same side antler. It just might be the same buck. In the end though, part of what intrigues us about antlers is the mystery of them. And though I may not be able to ever solve this mystery, we can learn a lot about antlers and man, do they ever make hunting interesting. Until next time, I'm Daryl with Seeds to Dreams Deer, and I hope that you find more than you think you're hunting for. Hey, I just wanted to thank everyone for watching my videos, liking them, subscribing and turning on the notifications, and especially I appreciate so much when you share it with your hunting buddies. It means a lot to me. I'll continue to make deer videos about deer behavior and hunting as long as there are people who want to watch them. Thank you.